Ever since its inclusion in Jurassic Park, Compsognathus has been a fan favorite prehistoric animal amongst children and adults alike. No doubt due to its fun sized proportions and seemingly hard to pronounce epithet. Once heralded as the smallest dinosaur, Compsognathus has since been beat many times over by smaller theropods. Oddly enough, there was a time when a completely different kind of Compsognathus was given the light of day. Before the dinosaur renaissance, the dinosaurs were widely accepted as slow, clumsy, lumbering, cold-blooded beasts. Thanks to the stacks and stacks of solid fossil proof falling out of Asia and now the rest of the world, it is widely accepted dinosaurs were not just related to birds, but birds are a type of dinosaur. We often look back on our old outdated notions of paleontology and scoff at how institutions of thought could have allowed such an obviously incorrect way of thinking to proliferate. Clearly, it was far more complex than you might think from a quick glance. Many half centuries before the dinosaur renaissance, many scientists saw marked similarities between the birds and non-avian dinosaurs. Most notable amongst these pioneering scientists was Thomas Henry Huxley, Carl Gegenbauer, and Edward Drinker Cope. Thomas Henry Huxley, known as Darwin's bulldog for his ardent support of evolution, recognized the osteological characteristics shared between non-avian theropod dinosaurs and more derived birds. Huxley used Archaeopteryx and Compsognathus as examples of evolutionary change over time, as they both come from the same geologic formation and share remarkably similar characteristics like hollow bones, wishbones, and pectoral girdles. At first glance, one notices the only difference between their fossils is the coat of raucous feathers covering the entirety of Archaeopteryx. However, there's more than meets the eye, but that's a story for another time. Compsognathus is known only from two semi-complete specimens, one from Germany and the other from France. The German find gives a fantastically clear image of the general anatomy of the animal. Othniel Charles Marsh, Edward Drinker Cope's rival, visited Germany to study the remains of the German specimen in 1881 after reading about the connection between birds and dinosaurs in the paper written by Thomas Huxley, which used Archaeopteryx and Compsognathus. At this time, and throughout the rest of the 1800s, the animal would be depicted with three fingers typical of most theropod dinosaurs. The French specimen found in 1971 is nearly twice as large and preserves much of its skeleton as well. Depending on what forms of paleomedia you grew up on, you may recall a compsognathus with either three fingers or two. This is due to that German specimen's lack of an obvious third finger. It was later found that they did have this third finger, but it was probably vestigial or reduced to some extent. In 1972, a year after the discovery of the French specimen, paleontologist Alain Bedard, alongside Louis Bidet and Gerard Thamal from the Museum of Natural History in Nice, France, wrote up a description of the bones and slapped on a new name. Old Frenchy wasn't your ordinary compsognathus, for its fingers were bigger and longer than the German discovery. Thus, Bedard and others dubbed the animal Compsognathus coralestris. So, now we have an animal way bigger than a chicken-sized German combi with a complete set of three long fingers. As noted by Bedar, the arms are way too short compared to the body on both Frenchy and Wienerschnitzel, but the fossils of the new guy told Bedar and company something was up with the turkey dinner-sized carnivore. In the description of the beastie, it was observed the forearm had an ankylosis of bones which means the radius, ulna, and hand bones were more rigid and could not move as well as what you would see in other theropod dinosaurs. With this in mind, the researchers suggested there may have been a dermal bone or hardening of skin in the area of the forelimb to form a paddle of some sort. This species of Compsognathus had penguin flippers. These flippers were hypothesized to be adapted as paddles for the animal to propel itself through the water. 
This would make the animal very similar to a cormorant or penguin, or even the much later Hesperornithids of the western interior seaway. A good reasoning was given by the descriptors, in that the fossil also preserves a relatively long, goose-like neck and long legs built for wading. This kind of physiology would fit something that doesn't use its hands and nabs little animals with its long neck and tiny needle-like teeth while standing above the water's surface. Since the fossil remains were found in a formation which represented an island chain during the late Jurassic, it makes a lot of sense for something to have adapted to be able to cross between the islands and hunt for fish and crustaceans. No wonder they came up with this idea. Case closed, right? Yeah, no. Progenitor of the dinosaur renaissance, John Ostrom, re-described this specimen in 1978 and fully debunked the penguin flipper hypothesis. Compsognathus corallestris was no more and the cool new submarine species of Compi was sunk back into Compsognathus longipes, as it stands today. Specifically, Ostrom wrote that the forelimb bones of the French specimen, though more well preserved than the ones in the German specimen, were still not complete enough for anyone to conclusively say what they represent. Bidar and his team diagnosed the French specimen as a new species based off of characteristics which do not pass scientific rigor. The new species was erected because the new specimen was larger than the German specimen and had the flipper-like impressions on the arms. But when Ostrom re-examined the fossil, he found that the impressions that seemed to be soft tissue attached to the forelimb in the shape of a fin or flipper-like organ were present in other parts of the fossil, and even went past the body fossil of the animal itself, which means the impressions were not some part of the animal's body. Instead, they were just cracks and ripples of the rock surrounding the fossil. Though the effort made by Bedar and others was admirable, and they did write up a great description of the fossil material, they could have used a few more once-overs of their ideas and measurements before jumping to a penguin cormorant idea. Despite the hypothesis being debunked, plenty of paleoartists at the time ran with the idea and produced some truly wacky interpretations. We ain't done with penguin saurians though, for, in a case of pure serendipity, an animal would be found many decades later that stunned the scientific community. In 2015, Halskoraptor Escuyai was described. Halskoraptor has an impressive backstory as to how the scientific community got a hold of it, involving black markets and the ethical hemming and hawing about what to do with stolen fossils. And you can get a more in-depth look to the story in my episode on the goose-like critter. In short, the fossils were pirated from somewhere in Mongolia. They circulated around the fossil black market until an ethical fossil seller got a hold of the story, tracked it down, and got it into the hands of more trusted institutions. The quaint little critter had short arms that would have been encased in a flipper-like wing in life, with a long goose-like neck and head, and long hind limbs assumed to be webbed. Its center of gravity was more vertical than other theropods and had a shorter tail as well, all of which are adaptations suggestive of a cormorant-like lifestyle. And nearly word for word the description given by Bedar of the ecology of the French Compsognathus specimen. So the hypothesis is still alive, just with a raptor rather than a compi. Make sure you like this video and share it around, leave a comment if you like, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Pledge to my Patreon at any tier you like for a slew of many delicious offerings. Special thanks to patrons Dinosaur, Natticat, Steve Bradshaw, Thais Fenson, Arda Bayer, Ray M, Dana Manchester, Aphid Kirby, and Chris Frampton.